Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful spring Sunday morning, also the seventh and final Sunday of the Easter season. Uh, the, the day of the Ascension was celebrated on Thursday, and of course next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, so please make plans to be with us again. And uh, as always on Pentecost Sunday, if you've got something red, uh, please wear it, share it with us. Uh, a few announcements this morning to share with you. Uh, first is that even though uh, we're hearing all kinds of things about masks or not masks, uh, for the time being we will continue to wear them until uh, the governor of New York has something to say. I suspect it won't be much longer, but uh, just for the sake of others, we will continue here uh, until we hear a, a different word. Then, secondly, I do want to invite you following worship this morning. We are having a coffee hour uh, in what is known as the all-purpose room, but I am going to rename that room the Mary Martha room uh, because Mary and Martha were such wonderful hosts, and so many things happen in that room that it seems appropriate, at least in my mind, uh, to, to do that. So please join us for coffee following worship this morning. And uh, there are also uh, snacks and cookies all prepackaged. Uh, if you have any concerns about that. Then looking ahead on the calendar, uh, we had a meeting this past week, the second meeting of our Strawberry Festival uh, Committee. Uh, thanks to all of you who've signed up to help. We've got about 45 or 50 volunteers so far who are willing to help with the Strawberry Festival, so it's full steam ahead. Uh, mark it on your calendar, we're having it. Uh, so that should be a, a great event and, a great, in a sense, a great way for us to have something to celebrate uh, as we reopen. Also, uh, I hope you've already marked on your calendars that we are having a congregational meeting uh, in June to select a call committee uh, to search for, the, for a new associate pastor over the course of the summer. So if you haven't marked that on your calendar, please do so. Uh, you may have noticed we have a a fewer, a fewer few people here than we, than we normally have at this service on a Sunday morning. And of course, that's because our mission team is up at Koinonia this weekend uh, doing some much-needed work on several of the buildings up at Koinonia. We hope that they are being successful. I know that many of them are heading uh, home later this afternoon or early this evening. Some are staying over. And then they're going up again next weekend uh, to hopefully finish some of the work that, uh, that they've started this week. So our prayers are with them for safe travel as they come and go. On Tuesday of this week, we have a meeting of those, uh, youth, those of our youth and their parents who are interested in going to the ELCA Youth Gathering uh, next, next summer. Uh, that's at 5.30 on Tuesday. So uh, if you have a youth who is interested, please be... Uh, please be here for that meeting. I think those are the announcements for this day. The rest of them are in your bulletin. Uh, I do just want to share with you that we do have two baptisms later today. Uh, one, one for uh, Logan Maycom, uh, fourth generation uh, baptized here at Trinity. And the other one is Ryan Lancome, and that's, he is third generation baptized here at Trinity. So we celebrate with them. And of course, during this time of COVID, we've been having baptisms after worship so that uh, more family members could attend. But uh, we're, we will be bringing that to an end in June so that baptisms will once again uh, be part of our regular worship. And we really look forward to that. At some point in the future, we will ask all of the uh, families who've had children baptized during this time to bring them some, some Sunday morning uh, so that we can all meet them. With those things being said, please rise and we will gather at the baptismal font. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, 
that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches, wisdom and strength, and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor, glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, 
For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia! This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia! 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 The Lord be with you. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts, the first chapter. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all this time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, they are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. The Lord knows the way of the righteous.
A reading from 1 John, the fifth chapter. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Who, who, whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Lift up your hearts and hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them. And know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was, th was, while I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have come full circle. We have celebrated a week of weeks of the Easter season. And so today we come to the last day, the last Sunday a time of endings and a time of beginnings. It is the way of the world. And though, as we 
as we celebrate this final Sunday, there is a sense of joy and anticipation about what is to come. There is also some sense of sadness that we are leaving the Easter season behind, and that's the way it is with the seasons of our lives. We see it in the world around us. Strange that even with COVID coming to an end, people who've been asked to wear masks for months and months are now having trouble giving them up. They want to continue wearing them because in the masks there is a sense of safety, a sense that we're doing the right thing, that we're protecting ourselves and protecting others. So we find ourselves in this place in between drawn into the future, but in some ways wedded to the past. We see it in the graduations of young people. The day of a graduation is a time of celebration. We gather, we celebrate the accomplishments, and we look forward to what is going to come next for the greater responsibilities for finally be able, being able to sort of put school behind us and get on with our lives. But there is also the sense that what we had was something special. And now we have to give that up. There are friends that we have seen every day we will no longer see. And old patterns must give way to new. And so it is with this Easter season. We are coming to its end, but as we come to its end, we are drawn back to the beginning. To the evening of the Last Supper, that evening that began with the foot washing and Jesus' commandment to abide in him, to love one another as a sign of discipleship. And as Jesus closes out his earthly ministry, he looks beyond the immediacy of his own death to offer his prayer for the disciples, for the ones who have followed him and will continue to follow him in this world. And it seems as if this as it seems as if when this prayer starts, that Jesus is reporting back to the Father what has taken place throughout his ministry. He talks about how he has gathered the disciples, how he has fed them with the word, how they have come to believe, how their faith has been deepened, how they have continued to follow. And he prays that they will continue, that they will be productive in their work. But he also prays because they need protection. This part of John's gospel actually seems just a little bit dark. He talks about how much they will need protection because the world hates them as the world hated him. The world will seek to destroy them as the world sought to destroy him. He came into the world to be the light, he reports to the Father. But the world has denied the gift. It has denied the light. Instead of receiving the gift, they tried to kill the gift giver. They have pushed down the poor. They have oppressed women. They have militarized the world. And so as Jesus looks at his disciples, there is that sense of darkness because he knows the violence that will come their way if they continue in the path that he has given them. So indeed, they need protection. Protection from the world. Not necessarily, though, protection from the earth, 
but protection from the powers of the world. Liturgical professor Claudio Carvalis writes, there is a very harmful interpretation of the word world that understands the whole planet as the world to which we belong. This interpretation, he writes, denies everything that lives on earth as a gift from God. The consequence of this thinking is serious. If we are not from this world, what is the point of caring and fighting for the life of the planet? In fact, the end of this world must entail the destruction of nature, for it is a sign that the end of time is near, that God's parousia and Jesus' arrival is at hand. He goes on, at this point, we need to make a distinction that will help us to understand the world we live in and must deny, and the world that we live in and must work for. Perhaps we could make a distinction between the world and the earth. The world is that part of our planet that lives in patriarchal structures, practices necropolitics, enforces violence, mandates prisons, militarization, attacks on the poor, closing of borders, some rich people getting richer while everybody else becomes poorer, and the whole destruction of the earth. So he makes this distinction between the earth and the world, and we are invited as the people of God to continue to work on behalf of the earth and to change the world, to bring a message of hope and love and peace into this frighted world. This is the mission to which we are called. It is the work that Jesus has given us. This is the work we are called for which Jesus has prayed for us. And if you take nothing else away today, take this. On the evening of the Last Supper, only hours away from his own humiliation and death, with all of the things that Jesus could have been thinking about, all of the things that he could have prayed for, in those moments, he felt that the most important thing he could bring to the Father were words of prayer for you and for me that we can live in this world, that God will protect us, that God will empower us, that God will be with us in the darkness and lead us to the light, that as we work for peace and justice, as we stand with the poor, as we feed the hungry, that we will receive the grace and the strength that we need to carry on. Jesus doesn't pray that we be taken out of the world, that we be saved. He prays that God be with us in the midst of the turmoil and the strife, that we continue to be faithful. We're not called upon to succeed in everything we do. We're called to be faithful. And we are empowered. We are strengthened. We are given everything that we need. In your darkest moments, remember. Remember that Jesus in his final hours, thought the most important thing he could do was to pray for you, to lift you up, 
to offer prayers for your life and your peace and your hope. And you know what a wonderful gift it is to be prayed for. You know, this past winter, just a week before Christmas, our youth group was taking signs to people's homes, Christmas, decorated Christmas signs, and putting them on their lawns. And some of those youth were greeting people at their doors. And I got a knock on my door one night, and there was one of our youth and her mother, and they had a sign for our front lawn. And she put the sign in the ground, and she came to the front steps. And she offered a prayer for me. And I won't embarrass her today by sharing her name with you. But I can say to you, and I would say to her, thank you so much for praying for me. I have to tell you, in almost 37 years of ministry, people have said to me, I will pray for you, Pastor. But that was the first time that someone stood with me on the front steps of my home in the midst of COVID and prayed for me. What a powerful thing that is. And what a powerful thing it is to know that our Lord Jesus Christ prays for all of us. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard our hearts and keep our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Wise teacher, as we come to the season of graduation, Grant wisdom to those who are celebrating milestones in education. Help them to use their gifts on behalf of others and for the sake of your good creation. Make these days a season of joy and celebration for what has been accomplished. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to Erica, Bonnie, George, Ed, Ronnie, Patty, Jean, Ruth, Trudy, Bob, Hannah, Marilyn, William, Paul, Bill, Ruth, June, James, John, Anthony, Maureen, Pat, Linda, Olivia, 
Susan, Eleanor, Diane, John, Ed, Arlene, Chrissy, Faith, Eric, Lori, David, Bob, Grace, Tom, James, Jacqueline, Ken, all in need and those we name silently before your throne of grace. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. As Ryan and Logan are baptized today, grant to them gifts for love and service. Give each of us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Serving God, be with our mission team as they finish their work at Koinonia and travel home. Make their work fruitful and their journey safe. As we make plans for calling a new associate pastor, guide our efforts and bless those seeking calls. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in their never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. You may be seated as the table is prepared and the offering is received. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all. <clears throat> Grace our table with your presence and give us.
for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, who enthroned forever at your right hand, intercedes for us as our great High Priest. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. In mercy and grace you sent to us your Son, Jesus. And so we offer our praise for the Annunciation to Mary by the angel Gabriel, for our Lord's birth in Bethlehem, for the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph, for the journey of the Magi and the sharing of the gift with all the world, for the good news to the shepherds, for the wedding at Cana, for the call of the disciples, for rescuing people Peter from the sea, for raising Lazarus from the dead, for going to the home of Mary and Martha and teaching what true hospitality is. We give you thanks for the loaves and the fishes, for the teaching, for the gift, of the Lord's Prayer, for the miracles wrought for the sick and for the dying. Indeed, we give thanks for our Lord Jesus who walked from Galilee to Jerusalem and went to the cross for the sake of the world. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
O gracious Lord, as you have gathered us around your holy table, feed us with your own body and blood. Pour out your Holy Spirit into our lives. Lift us up. Empower us to serve and make us one. In the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you. Beside you to befriend you above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.